You heard me, I said this food sucks! You expect us to eat this stuff? What do you mean it sucks? This pepper beef is too damn spicy! <laughs> What are you talking about? This is good. How's it going, everybody? Pepper Beef Too Spice here. It is today is January 23rd. It is 2.57 p.m. And I just woke up an hour ago after a late night of playing Sims 4 like an idiot. And I woke up to the news that Tekken 7 received a new trailer as per what was uh, announced earlier that we would be getting some new information, especially the release date. Uh, earlier last week, uh, I didn't expect that to happen so uh, quickly on Monday. What would be what would be Monday morning? I assume that's like nighttime in Japan already. Um, we would be getting a new trailer. Um, also that we would get the release date and uh, some a few other announcements. Also, we got some other details about the story mode. Which uh, was unveiled in the latest trailer, the Rage and Sorrow trailer. Now I'm gonna take you guys through it and gonna just point out some of the few uh, things that I noticed while I was watching it. I've got the trailer here and let's get started with that. I'm usually not used to making videos so early right after I'll make up, but uh, concerning this one is pretty important. I figured I'd get on it right away. Alright, so first off, we can see that this is a brand new cutscene. We have Mini Kazuya fighting young Heihachi, even though young Heihachi pretty much looks like old regular Heihachi, but with black hair. <laughs> um, there was, it is important to know that there was a image or so, or an announcement or something like that, a combination of the two, uh, earlier where you uh, were shown to be able to play Mini Kazuya in a story mode cutscene, uh, not cutscene, a uh, story mode uh, fight. Uh, I believe that both Young Heihachi and Mini Kazuya were locked to story mode and that you would not be able to play them uh, for the main mode unless someone with modern PCs. So as you see, you can hear here that Kazuya is uh, already training with Heihachi to take over the Mishima Zaibatsu, although from Kazuya's perspective, he really just hates him and wants to kill his father. And it's likely that his hatred of his father stems from this moment, which is the death of Kazumi. Um, now there's something very interesting later in the trailer that I would like to draw attention to that would um, make this uh, whole, you know, I killed your mother kind of thing very, very interesting. And so next we have here the, the montage of various, um, you know, events, the important events throughout the Tekken series, mostly concerning the Devil Gene. And then it kind of slows down here to show some new shots of a uh, new character, and uh, not new characters necessarily, but uh, new shots of what is apparently the story mode, as you can look at the lighting, it's not usually what and what characters would go through uh, during their character character introduction sequences, nor is the uh, camera work. So you can see Elisa, and I'll slow it down some more. So you've got Lars, like the Jins, like the, the these lightings, and then the background. These are not uh, character introductions. These are story mode cutscenes, which is very interesting to me. Which is harkening back to uh, you know Tekken Six, where you had some cutscenes in the uh, scenario campaign. Although, you know, they did not look nowhere, nowhere as good as this. I'm still not sure whether they are using the in-game assets or they are pre-rendered CGI uh, cutscenes. Some of them probably will be, some of them are. Uh, I'm assuming they're akin to, um, you know, uh, what is it? movie? Tekken um, Blood Vengeance or whatever the movie was called. You see Nina, you see Lee, and you see Kazuya, and uh, Hayashi looking down from the uh, looking up the ceiling. So you can see all the major players in what should be the story mode, the conflict between father and son. Um, speed up a little bit, you see Kazuya, and then you can see behind him that I assume that is the uh, logo for the G Corporation. So Kazuya is still in charge of the G Corporation. Uh huh, Heihachi, and then, you know, more Heihachi, and now in a samurai outfit, and then more rage. Yes, the lava, we've already seen this. And then, you know, Kazuya charging back in. Now, what everything, I'll get everything back. That's a line that Kazuya said in Tekken 4 when he came back to life and he was fighting all of the, the Tekken Force. And he said that at the end when he beat up that one Tekken 4 soldier instead of shooting him with the Desert Eagle. Like I would have wanted, but whatever. Also, we'll reach this climax is a pretty funny line. It's kind of like, I guess in English that sounds kind of funny. Um, for reasons. 
Also, a small note, the way the assault rifles that the Tekken Force are using are not similar to the, te the Tekken Force assault rifles in Tekken 6 or in Tekken Tag 2. These are more realistic and it looks like they're based off the QBZ-79, I think, the Chinese uh, bullpup assault rifle, also grenade launchers. So you can see that this is the uh, meet the Tekken Zaibatsu or whatever, Misha building uh, rooftop with the factory and such that is one of the stages in Tekken 7, the one where the final, uh, whenever it goes to a possible final round, the uh, stage goes from an elevator to the rooftop. Um, you can see all the Tekken 4s are aiming their guns at someone. Now the camera is a really far away and the person's wearing a black cloak so you can't really see who it is. Um, I'm either guessing it is Heihachi or it is Kaze or it is Jane, one of the three. And you can see from the hairline that it's probably one of the Mishimas and I'm actually more betting it's more on Kaze or Jin. You can see here that the lighting is in the model quality is way too good to be in-game graphics and this is likely here a uh, pre-rendered cutscene. Um, Elisa, you can tell by the metal hand, and it's kind of small, that she's aiming a gun, also the background is similar, um, that she's aiming a gun at Lee. Now, Lee was just announced for the console version not too long ago, and he's not currently in the arcade versions of Tekken 7. Um, but it's important to note here that Lee is actually going to be part of the story here, um, considering he's in this cutscene. If, if he plays what role as any, we don't know, because Lee is kind of like a, you know, a, um, teetering on good guy, bad guy thing, he's kind of only really in it for himself, but he's got like a soft spot. But he's, he's still kind of like a perfectionist, that kind of thing. I see the Tekken Force are shooting someone, and I'm imagining the cutscene that would follow here, or the scene rather, that would follow here, is that somebody is blocking, dodging, doing anime things, green crazy things, being all Tekken Force, etc. Um, Nina in her uh, Tekken movie outfit. Uh, and then you could see someone walking through the desert in a black in a brown cloak which is I don't know where people keep finding these brown cloaks to go on long wandering journeys with but they make them look so fucking badass I swear to god um, You could see about the pants that are metal and you can't really see the gloves Also somebody driving in a, a an armored whatever SUV APC whatever um, and then you have Lars, and then you walk over to Jin, who is standing over there in the uh, infirmary of sorts. And you can notice that his pants are the same coloration as the man in the desert. Now, if you recall, also Nina in her uh, Tekken movie outfit, again, very sexy, shiny as fuck. Um, uh, the man in the desert is uh, probably Jin, judging by the color of his pants and then the color of the pants in the in the infirmary for Jin. Also note that at the end of Tekken 6 scenario campaign, uh, spoilers for that if you even care about that, um, Jin is in the desert after um, not necessarily fighting Azazel, but it, it's something to do with Tekken 6 means uh, main, you know, Tekken 6 is central villain, which is Azazel, like the god of evil or whatever like that. And um, Jin was supposed to fight Azazel and they were supposed to kill each other. And they would hope that they would erase a devil gene, but Jin uh, was found later in the desert alone by a Raven, and he still has the devil gene unconscious. So I'm assuming that is Jin waking up in Egypt after the events of Tekken Six. Also note here that in this uh, particular spot, you have the the same area as the Mishima building, because you can judge by the lighting. And the Tekken soldiers are all aiming their guns, and then someone drops down, and it's Nina, and. F judging by way she looks, she's looking antagonistic to whoever's coming at them, so it is likely, um, you know, Kazuya or Heihachi, so since she, considering she doesn't like either of them. You could see here that Heihachi pushed aside a Tekken soldier, which probably confirms that he or is has some control, if not all control, of the Michima Zaibatsu, while Jin was incapacitated at the end, at the end of Tekken 6. So you can see security doors closing, and Nina is locked in, and she has to get away. Okay, and then you can see here that these soldiers here are dressed like not the Tekken 4 soldiers because they're not super futuristic, and I think these are actually G Corp soldiers or just soldiers from the area or something. They try to inspect the guy, and these guys are likely about to get beaten up in like 5 seconds. And then you can see here, actually, it's kind of hard to see because I th thought this was Angel at first, but this is Devil Kazumi, and she is doing the classic uh, forehead, third eye, laser beam thing, and she's, you know, laser beaming something, and she's also flying with burning wings, which I think is really cool. I think her outfit looks really, really, really cool here. Uh, I think that the devil horns are a bit much, but, you know, I think it looks really cool. Um, 
And you can see Heihachi is dodging this. And now, this is very, very interesting to me, because I'm gonna call it back to something I mentioned earlier about Kazuya being mad that Heihachi killed his mother. Now, there are two conflicting narratives here. Heihachi has said that he killed Kazumi. Yes, this is a fact, this is known. But Kazumi said that she needed to stop Heihachi no matter what, and even if it costs her her life. Now, we have known about the devil gene is that it brings about the worst in us. It is pretty damn evil considering devil Kazuya is evil and devil Jin is pretty psychopathic based on his, you know, his, one of his victory uh, intro, victory outros is him just laughing like crazy. Um, and this is the reason why it's called the devil gene. So, and the fact that Heihashi was shown crying, or at least tearing up, when he thought about Kazumi, it's assuming that Heihachi killed Kazumi not because of malice, but because he had to put a stop to the devil gene. That is one possibility. The other possibility is that Heihachi was already evil from the start and Kazumi just had the supernatural power and that she wanted to stop him even though it kind of looks like an evil supernatural power. She was fully in control of her actions and that she um, just wanted to stop him but she failed. But Heihachi killed her even though he loved her because she was trying to stop him. So there are two narratives that we have there and um, I'm, you can decide which one is for real. You know, who's the evil one? Maybe they're both right and maybe they're both wrong. You don't know until we're going to find out about the story later on. We can only speculate at the moment. Uh, and once again, you have Kazuya on new cutscene as well. And he is, that is, assuming he is, that is Kazuya doing the laser beam as well. And that was, looks like either Heihachi or Akuma dodging that. And this looks like a rooftop stage. This looks like, I believe, yes, this is the Mishima rooftop, but in the daytime. I'm starting to believe that this is where the final battle, if not the climax battle of the story mode, will take place. Uh, because because it was nighttime earlier, right now it's like morning, assuming that a lot of events are going to take place in the Mishima Zaibatsu uh, headquarters. Um, and you can see here that this person in the desert is powering up and they shoot a laser through the sky. There are only two people, or rather... Well, technically five, but there are only two people left in the story who can do laser I I mean I beam or whatever, just laser beams. Jin and Kazuya, and considering that Kazuya is uh fine and well and he's not a drifter or anything, and the last thing Jin we saw of him was in the desert, that this is really most likely Jin. And you can see Kazuya's also is a different color. Now he's firing his eye laser, but notice that he's not on the Mishima Zaibatsu roof building. He's actually on an adjacent building. Now what does this mean? That means he could be firing at something in the sky, or that there's going to be a crazy Man of Steel battle throughout the city. He could be firing at Jin, he could be firing at Heihachi, we don't know, he could be firing at an airship. I don't know. Also he's crying because this is what is likely um, happening as soon as Heihachi defeats Kazumi, is that he's sad that he has to do it. Now the question is, is he sad that he had to do it because she was evil, or is he sad that he had to do it because she had he had to do it because he was trying to stop her plans? We don't know. We don't know. And there's Hachi again, and then there's Nina trying to fight him. And this brings more to the theory that the person on the roof that was being shot at was Heihachi. Uh, likely when he tries to green gate control the Mishima Zaibatsu. And also note here is that this is still a special cutscene because the lighting and the camera angles are all different and the animation is just way too good for a pre-rendered cutscene. Um, anyways, there's a big kick and then you can see here that it transitions into the in-game graphics. As you can see, the graphics aren't as good, the lighting isn't as dynamic, and the transitions back into the normal stage. I'm starting to think that the cutscenes and the story mode in Tekken 7 will work a lot like this where um, you're going to have cutscenes that are going to show the starts of fights, um, but most, if not all, I'm actually going to go back and then say most fights are not going to finish, and that when uh, they get to a point in the fight where there's some breathing room, it's actually going to break away the CGI, and you're going to go into a fight mode where you will play as a character, which um, is starting to make me think that the story mode will be focused on whoever you play at the moment, like in Tekken, I mean like in Soul Calibur V, and instead, you will not be able to play story mode through any of the characters that you like, maybe. Um, there, will pause, there will definitely be an arcade mode so you can get endings and such for other characters, but um, you know, the story mode will be locked to the story essential characters, so unfortunately, we won't be seeing my favorite um, martial arts uh, copy, who is a poor American chef trying to make his way through life 
in the story mode, but I didn't have any hopes for that anyways. Here we see Lars again fighting a G-Corporate soldier in Egypt, doing a fancy kick, and you can see the lighting and the, the characters who are here in the back in the foreground, they're way too close for the um you know for them to be in the stage, so this is once again a pre-rendered cutscene. Okay. And you have uh, Kazia, I never like the purple on him. Oh there it does the Lars does a sweep. Lisa looks serious. I think the thing that's interesting about Elisa in these um in these cutscenes is that Elisa is looking very serious and that she's not the you know super ganky girl she usually is and that I think that she's um, undergone some character development and that she's you know more determined about doing justice and all that you know after the events of Tekken 7 where she was controlled by the kill switch the Michima Zaibatsu and she's kind of free of it now and Lars Lar is like her boyfriend or something. I don't know Lars is into some weird shit because he's got that haircut. Also you can see here that Lisa is fighting uh, Nina. Now this is very interesting to me because I think technically they would be on the same side because Nina is on Jin's side and Jin is ultimately good, but you know he's kind of an anti-hero. Elisa is on Lars' side, who was definitely good. So there might be a misunderstanding here, or that Elisa is trying to get to something and that Nina is preventing her, or that Elisa once again is being controlled by the kill switch, um, and Nina has to fight her or something, or they I don't know, you know, for some reason they have to have a girl fight. Uh, okay, and then you have here, Akuma and uh, is fighting a jack, and he kicks away the jack and throws a Godoken at another jack. So you can see here that possibly Akuma was looking for Heihachi, that he was in the temple, and then he was attacked by the jacks. Once again, you have another pre-rendered cutscene here of Elisa and Nina fighting each other. And then weirdly here, you can see I think that it, the graphics change back to normal, so this is once again um, proving my... Or rather, not proving, but adding evidence to my theory that the cutscenes will be uh, half finished and then they will transition to a fight scene where you will fight the fight for yourself in the actual game. Because you can see here there's a hit spark and they would never show that in the actual uh, movie or the CGI cutscenes because that just looks silly. L uh, Lee is surprised and then Elisa attacks him. Now, judging by the look of the stage, it looks like that Elisa is fighting her way towards something and that Lee is in a deeper part of the chamber, which means that it's possible that Lee, that Elisa is a playable character here, and that she's fighting through the um, the building to get to something, and then eventually she has to fight uh, Lee. But also note that her outfit was different, and it wasn't the new Tekken 7 outfit, it is her generic uh, original outfit. Akuma, once again, throwing some uh, Shoryukens at Jack. Okay, Lee fighting Elisa. And he's pausing to do his um, his rage art. Okay, rage art, Lee. I think we've seen it before. Boom. Yeah, see, that's Lee. You're saying something weird in very slow motion. Throw a rose at you. Here, definitely a man of quite flamboyance. Okay, and you have Claudio being beat up by Hachi. Now, I think that he, that Claudio is going to be one of the new characters who is rather, Im not in super important, going to be relevant to the story because his background is in fighting the supernatural. Um, so, Claudio will be uh, some part of the story, at least. Um, also, we have a fucking badass shot of Elisa with a minigun. Oh my god, this is looking badass as fuck as she guns down something. I'm assuming she's either gunning down some jacks opening a door. I'm assuming that it, it's the hallway where she's locked in, so she has to gun down a door or something. Kaze fighting, firing his uh, devil beam, and you notice that it collides with something, not something metal. It collides with another energy beam. Don't know what that is, but there's a huge explosion, and I, the only thing I can think of that could stop a laser beam is uh, Jin's laser beam, so it's possible the two will fight on the rooftop. What fuels your ambition? Rage? I do not know currently to be the best Lei Long martial law player, or Sorrow. So it, it's, once again, it's beckoning to this question of whether Heihachi did what he did for malicious reasons or because just he had no other choice in the matter. So it's really a case of unreliable narrative. The whole narrative of Tekken so far is that Heihachi is just an evil prick and that, you know, he does what he does because he's evil. But maybe he's trying to rid the world of the devil gene? Who knows? You know, we, you know, we won't know. We just only can speculate for now. June 2nd, 2017. What I have to say about this release date really quickly is that I thought it would be March. A lot of people thought it would be March, but I guess they're pushing it back. Um, there are reasons to be mixed about this. There is the good reasons, which is, one, um, pushing a game back further kind of gives a greater chance that it will be less, more solid on release, you know, more balanced 
um, less buggy, more features, etc., etc., so they have more time to finalize the game. Also, in the case of a fighting game, um, we have more time for more characters to be released, which is always good to have. Um, uh, so, you know, we still have the possibility, because this is half a year, pretty much. We are waiting uh, about four, four, four or five months until uh, Tekken 7, which is unfortunate. Um, they have to wait a little bit more, but, I mean, it, at least we finally have a date. I would have liked it to be March, because the game looks finished to me, but maybe they still need to do some tweaking. The bad side is, of course, we still have to wait a little bit more, and um, the game won't be out in time for final round, so we'll have to wait for final round next year. And then I think the only tournament that we will get uh, in the U.S. for Tekken 7 is EVO. Um, at least the first tournament, not the only tournament, obviously. Um, so that's uh, kind of unfortunate, and I'm sure a lot of people watching this and elsewhere are very salty, but at least we finally have it. I'm, I'm just curious to see why the official reason why they pushed it back, and I'm hoping it's so they can add, you know, a certain uh, Hong Kong cop into the game, a man who bears no resemblance to martial arts film star Jackie Chan. You know, it's just pure coincidence. All things are purely coincidence in that fact. And then once again, they kind of shot them punching each other in the face, and then we have a cut to Tekken 7. The best fights are personal. I don't really like that tagline. Sounds kind of cheesy, but it is what it is. Um, and then finally, uh, we get this really funny thing here at the end, where it's just thrown in at the last second. No cutscene at all. Just a JPEG. If you were not to receive Eliza, uh, I did not play Tekken Revolution that much. <laughs> To be honest, I had Tekken Tag 2, I had no reason to play Tekken Revolution because it was just Tekken Tag 2 without bounds and it was solo mode, uh, so basically Tekken 7. But um, uh, Eliza is confirmed to be in Tekken 7 and I had a feeling they were not going to let Eliza go because she was a brand new character that she was only exclusive to in one free game. And I didn't think they were going to let that character go to waste so I, I'm not surprised that they're going to throw her in as a DLC bonus. Um, it's kind of unfortunate that we have to pay for the DLC because in Tekken Tech 2's console mode, uh, all the DLC characters came with the game. It was, you know, a console bonus. Well, not all of them came with it, but they were all eventually free. You didn't have to buy them online. Um, so now it sounds like that if you pre-order, which I'm going to for sure, um, Tekken 7, we're gonna, you're gonna get Eliza instead of having to buy her later because I'm assuming if you don't pre-order her, she will be released at a later date. Um... Uh, when I mean later date, it sounds like that um, we don't necessarily have to pay for Eliza, but the release date for Eliza will be later, like, you know, it'll come out later for people who do not pre-order the game, so I guess there's no reason not to, unless of course you're hurting for money or not decided about the game, whatever. So the sexy vampire from Tekken Revolution is coming to uh, Tekken 7, and she's really a, not, not a very Tekken-like character, like Akuma, she's a lot of projectiles, a lot of weird stuff, a lot of really flashy anime stuff. Um, you know, not really a fighting style representation, just like, oh, look, she's basically just, you know, Tekken's version of Morgan. Um, so, well, not a sucky bus, but, you know, close enough. Um, I don't know last time, I don't remember last time I saw a vampire have horns, though, but, uh, you know, whatever. Um, so that's that for you. Um, we'll get you, so what we have learned so far is that Heihachi may or may not be malicious intent. There's, uh, some mix, there's some cutscenes in the story mode. Uh, it's June out June 2nd, 2017. Eliza is a pre-order bonus, so if you want to play your sexy vampire chick, you might want to get on that. You want to get on that. Thank you guys for watching so much, and I will see you guys on the next time. Thank you.